What have you seen from Preston, just how he's kind of responded with Zedarius out and how he's kind of stepped forward? Yeah, well, I mean, the uh, I know the approach that I have, and you know, it's it's cool. Preston and I have a have a a long relationship, but um, you know, I've I've told him this before. You know, I, I would expect him playing like this and doing what he's been doing if Z was here. You know, because um, I, I think he has that type of ability. He's that type of player. So, um, but he, he's been doing a great job, and um, you know, we obviously. You know, expect a lot out of him, and he's a hell of a player, and he can do those things consistently. So, um, you know, I want it to continue. What's the biggest way in which your background with Preston has kind of helped, having coached him before, has kind of helped this year? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's a, a, a big deal, but um, it, it is neat when you come into a situation where you have a, um, a previous relationship, you know, with a player from a, from a previous team, from a previous spot, and I think I've told you, you guys before. I mean, um, we we were all, you know, we were all young at one point, and you know, um, it's been neat for me to be around Preston when he was, you know, a 22 year old rookie or whatever he was, um, compared to you know, six years later now, just to see how he's grown up and, um, you know, he's he's married now. He's he's a, he's a father, you know, so. Um, he's he's matured and grown up, so it, it's both off the field and on the field, and uh, it, it's been it's been neat to see. From where he started way back in '15 to where he is now as a player, what's the biggest change in, in who he is today compared to? Well, I mean, Preston's always had the you know, I mean, Preston was a, a high second round draft pick. I mean, he he's always been, he's always had the ability. There's no doubt about it. But I, I think, you know, and like I said, I mean, we all can go back, and we we were all you know, young at one point. And uh, I think now Preston's just, he's kind of got his his uh, priorities in order and, you know, cares about his family and cares about playing good football. So um, it, that, that's been that's been neat for me to see being removed from him for however long, like I said, five or six years, whatever it's been. Um, but the talent's there. I mean, he's, he's, he's got all the ability in the world. So, um, and Mike Smith does a great job with him. And it's it's been neat, but again, like I said, I would I would expect him to be playing like he's playing, you know, even if Z was here. But it, it's been uh, it's been great to see him step it up. Kind of a Captain Obvious question here, but what's the challenge there with, with the Steelers running back Harris? I mean, he's yeah. as far as a receiver, yeah, being that he's two thirty, you know, getting him out against some smaller guys. Sure, uh, you know, he's he's a hell of a back. You know, obviously had an unbelievable career at Alabama and then first round draft pick. And, um, you know, the thing that I think that people really don't understand and, you know, I'm actually anxious to, you know, until you really see a player in person, you, you can tell how physical he is and um, the type of player he is when he has the ball in his hand. But, um, you know, from what I could tell on tape, I mean, he, he's he's a big guy. You know, he really is. And um, they use him in all situations. It's not like he's just a guy that's, you know, uh, run an inside zone on, on first and 10. I mean, he plays on all downs. Uh, they use him in the empty game. You know, they, they get him out of the backfield and, and throw him the ball. Um, so he, he's a complete back and he's big, you know. So I think the biggest thing that, you know, we always talk about with our guys is you got to have a tackling plan. And what that means is um, you have to approach, as, as a defensive tackler, you have to approach a ball carrier different if he's, you know, a guy that's, you know, 5'10", 190 pounds compared to, you know, 6'1", 230 pounds. So you got to have a plan and really a mental approach on when that guy has the ball, how am I going to get him down? Because um, even in his, you know, early NFL career, I mean, he's, he's, he's embarrassed some people in, in the three games that they've had as far as running through them, running over them, uh, you know, stiff arming them. So, Got to have a plan, but he, he's a he's a talent. There's no doubt about it. Joe, um, the quarterback was saying that he thought you were uh, steamed after the last defensive series. Which quarterback? The, the, the three-time MVP guy. Because um, you guys were standing together at the end of the game, and then you obviously embraced afterwards. Yeah. What was that? Uh, uh, it was like for you. You know, it's it's. Um, 
the power of social media. That's 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 turned into something. But oh, I was. I'll be the first to admit I had bad body language, man. I was, um, I was, I was very upset. I was, I was, I was pissed, quite frankly. Um, and I was just, I was sulking, to be quite honest, um, down at the other end, and I didn't even notice Aaron was there. And then, you know, just obviously the, the, the kick went through and I turned and he was right there. So he came and I think just wanted to, you know, I needed a hug at that point. So, um, but what a, what an absolute stud, man. Uh, I mean, all those guys, I mean, everyone that was involved that, you know, our, our entire offensive line, but number 12, number 17, number two, um, I'm, I'm glad that they're, uh, I'm glad I'm on their team because they're, uh, Great players, great competitors, great finishers, and uh, you know it was I, it was it was a bummer that uh, you know from a defensive standpoint because I, I thought we I thought we played our asses off on uh, on Sunday night, and uh, you know um, if you give up an explosion play in two minutes, it's usually not good, and we gave up that that explosion play to George, and uh, it was it was unfortunate, but I tell you what what a what a you know no one panicked. Um, you know, even though I was, you know, I was sulking, I just, that was the thing that was cool. Even, even our, our, our entire team, uh, just kind of going back and reflecting on that. There was never, just from a feeling that I got, there was never a feeling from anybody on our sideline that the result that happened wasn't going to take place. And that was, that was really neat to, to witness and be a part of. So how did you process that final drive, the defensive drive, with your guys? Because you, you guys have played a pretty good game for yeah. the most part. And then, and then you know, you finished so well against Detroit, but then sure. you, did, you didn't finish the way you wanted to. Huh? No, well, I mean, it, it's, that, that's the thing. You know, I, I, that's every week. I mean, the National Football League, you know, a high, high, high percentage of games, you know, it comes down to, you know, the last, you know, 10 plays of the game, a high percentage of the time. And... Um, you know, I, th I think from a situational standpoint, that, that's something that we have to continue and improve on. And, you know, the three situations that, you know, most people continually talk about, third down, red zone, two minute, you know, and those are, those are things that, you know, we definitely have to continue to improve on. But specifically two minute at the end of the game, um, you know, we got to find a, find a way to make one play, you know, and we were, we were in position to do it. We just got to find to make one play, you know, um, especially in that situation. Third downs are always important, but third downs in two minute. Um, they had two unbelievable conversions, uh, one with, you know, 85 and one with 19. But um, we got to find a way to make that play in that situation. Um, and then it doesn't come down to, you know, the dramatics of, of what it was. So, um, but I tell you what, I, our guys, I thought they, uh, they played their tails off. They competed, um, and then you know, thank God for Mason getting the field goal at the end. Are there, Joe, are there a lot of adjustments in your red zone defense from what you normally play between the twenties? Because oftentimes you see you guys are pointing, and sometimes they're not sure who they're going to get. Uh, I know Matt made reference to uh, slant, but Kevin didn't go out because the rules changed inside the red zone. If I'm being accurate, I think that was in uh, Jacksonville game. Anyway, is are there things you need to simplify in the red zone for, for you guys? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean that that's that's the thing. You know, everything changes the closer you get to the goal line. You know, obviously that's that's where uh, you know every every offense, every defense subtly has different uh, you know aiming points as far as where you know what they refer to it when the ball's on the 30 compared to on the 20 compared to on the 10. Um, and the reason is because things happen a lot faster down there. And, you know, if you give up a, you know, you give up a eight yard play on the, on the 40 yard line, you know, you live to fight again. You give up an eight yard play when the ball's on the seven yard line, it's a touchdown. So um, things happen a lot faster down there. Um, you know, the, the, the Jacksonville play, whether, whether it was a pick or not, those are things that just take place down there in the red zone and they happen fast and you have literally a split second to make that decision. So, um, but it's something we, and, you know, we, we do have to improve down there. We're, we're close. 
um, you know, but that is um, situational football is, you know, something that we, we stress every week, but we really stress this week because a lot of times, you know, 80% of football games come down to, you know, the final two minute drive. Uh, and the team that executes is successful and the team that doesn't is unsuccessful. Time for a couple more in the room. What did you think of um, Jair's interception? Is that, is he generally not even supposed to be in that play? Is he just kind of looking for work? Or, you know, no, the, the, the coverage we had, we, because of the route concept that he got, we were able to gain him, you know, Coverage is, is all math, you know, and anytime you can get a numbers advantage, you know, especially over the top deep, um, it's great. And, and he absolutely, because of what he got in front of him, was able just to take off. And it was, it was really incredible because if, if, if he's a second late on that, you know, it's going to be an incomplete pass. But because he took off and went right away because his key told him to, he was able to be there, you know, 50 yards down the field and make a heck of a play. So um, just just an unbelievable instinctual play for him. But um, the the him not hesitating is what allowed him to do that. And it was it was awesome. It was a huge play for us. Both takeaways were. You guys played really, really well the first 29 minutes. And then obviously the, the short field and, and then the beginning of the third quarter. Was that just a momentum thing? Is there anything sure. from a, an adjustment standpoint to, to be made there? What, what no, was, you know, because I, I think we, we did recover, uh, you know, but that, that, that's, some, that, that's the ebbs and flows of a football game. You know, it's not always going to be perfect. The ball's not always going to start on the minus 20 yard line. You know, um, we never want to be in those situations. We call it sudden change. Uh, whether it be from a, you know, a turnover that our offense has or, you know, an explosion play that our special teams gives up. We don't want to be in those situations, but when we are, you know, we, we got to go slam the door. And um, those aren't optimal starting positions, but when, when you get put in those situations, you got to do it. Again, situational football, you know. Uh, we talked about third down. We talked about red zone. We talked about two minute. Uh, sudden change is right up there. And you got to go slam the door when you get put in those positions. All right, thank you. Uh, Sarah, let's take the take two from Zoom, please. Well, as you mentioned earlier, the uh, conversions that they had kind of down the stretch and how close they were. I mean, a number of times you guys probably feel like we should be off the field right now. You throw in the couple of questionable drive extenders, you got the penalties. How hard is it to fight against the urge to, quote, make something happen, i.e. send just try and send pressure, try to make something out of this frustration of, you know, we should be off the field now. Sure. Um, no, it, it, it's obviously there, but, you know, I, I believe in our guys. And, uh, um, you know, I – the other team practices too, you know, they get paid also, you know, guys, guys are, uh, you know, guys are, guys, guys are going to make plays. And we just, the number one thing that we got to do is just, you know, keep believing in what we're doing. And, and um, I tell you guys all the time, we got an incredible group of guys that, uh, that believe and fight and scratch and, and work. Um, and the, and the bottom line is we, we found a way to just go win the game and, I think a lot of that, um, you know, had to do with the way we played, um, you know, going in, you know, we, we got after the quarterback uh, the other night. We, we took the ball away two times. You know, those were, those were determining factors into, uh, in, into playing. We had a, a bunch of guys, you know, step up, you know, that, that got thrust into positions where they had to play a lot more. So, um, but no, you got you to be true to yourself and you got to believe and, um, I'll ride with those guys. You know, if they're, if our guys in those situations are in that same call again, there's not a doubt in my mind they make those plays. So you just got to believe and just keep keep fighting and scratching and clawing and and uh, and playing your butt off. And last one, Stacy Bills. Joe, uh, hey, Stacy. Ben said himself, "How are you?" Ben said himself um, this week he's got to play faster, start faster. I mean, I don't know how many times you've seen him over the years, but. Shoot, is this 18 years? Where is he at right now, given some of the struggles we've seen early and, and uh, you know, they haven't been able to really run the footballs like they wanted to? Yeah, well, 
you know, one thing I'm I'm never gonna uh, I'm never gonna turn my back on on Ben Roethlisberger. You know, he's been doing it for so long. There's there's nothing he hasn't seen. There's nothing he hasn't experienced. Um, so you know, we we are we are we are preparing um, obviously for the best version of of Ben Roethlisberger because he's been doing it a long time at a high level, and uh, you know, it's it's going to be our job just to you know keep. Uh, you really, Stacy. You really can't worry about those things. You know, I, I try not to ever enter the psyche of, you know, another an opponent coach or an opponent player or an opponent offense. Um, you know, I'm more more focused on you know what we got to do, and we got a daily improvement. We got to stack blocks every single day. Uh, we got to tackle better. We got to rush better. Um, you know, we got and the and the things that we're doing, we need to continue doing them and just do them a little bit better. So. Um, I think if, you know, if we take that approach, you know, we should be okay on Sundays.